Architects have been known to go to extreme lengths to get a sense of the place they're designing for. I'm not joking, seriously. Some architects do sleep on site. There's so much we need to find out. The tangible things like, where's the sun at any given point of the day? Where's the prevailing wind? What are the neighbors like? The spirit of the place, atmospheres. And then of course, there's the clients. Architects don't just design houses, they create homes. And that means they have to understand how the clients live, why they've chosen this site, what memories they bring with them, and what are their hopes for the future. So, if you find your architect sleeping on site, don't worry. Be respectful, be thankful. They're onto it. And they might just have been there all night. Just over 100 kilometers north of Auckland is the holiday hotspot of Mungafai. Its classic Kiwi combination of sea and sand leaves a lasting impression on those lucky enough to spend time here. Look at the sand dune. People like Matthew and Rosemary Dunning. What an amazing day. We should go over and get some tour tour again. It's a very inspiring sort of a landscape. The estuary was an amazing estuary, the ocean beach. You have this incredible sand environment. It's just beautiful, and we're an hour and a quarter from Auckland. It is very special. That closeness to Auckland and the ongoing demand for coastal land has seen Mungafai boom in recent years. However, there is one secluded spot left, beneath giant sand dunes on the far side of the estuary. This is Turn Point, where Matthew and Rose Murray bought a batch back in 2002 for family holidays with their two young sons. We're from Northland, and we'd always thought that we would ultimately have something on the coast because we grew up spending so much time on the coast. We were wanting to have a weekend that was usable as a family base for doing those things that we had enjoyed doing when we were growing up. And when we saw this one came here, we realised that this had everything we wanted. The Dunnings live in Auckland, where Matthew's a barrister and Rosemary's a project manager. Gets better working hard, she needs the exercise. But they're up at Mungafai every chance they get. In 2016, they sold their batch and brought a block of land at the northern end of Turn Point. And now, the small dwelling on site is about to make way for something much grander. We're building our principal residence here, and so we'll be here more going to now get serious about building here for retirement. Son Nick is still a regular at Mungafai, where he and his dad share a passion for restoring old cars. This joint here is busted through the lower section, see? Nick's an architectural designer who's studied and worked in Denmark and Sweden, and now has a small practice in Auckland. When Nick found out his parents were building, he pitched his concept and won the job. He knew what we wanted because he grew up in the environment and he knows the way we like to live in this environment. The design is absolutely spot on for us and for this property. It was exciting, mm. yeah. It was, it was the start of obviously a, a, a project that we were doing together. So what are the Dunnings building here between the ocean and the estuary? Incredible, a mountain of sand as a backdrop to this site. This is going to be really interesting. Matt. Hello, Hi. Tom. Rosemary. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hey, what a wonderful place you have here with a flying car behind you. Yeah, well, that's a long-term project, 12 years. Right. I've been doing that. A long project, but not the project we've come to see today. No, that's behind you. Right. Nothing uh, quite so developed over there, just a <laughs> marked out site for the house. Fantastic. What's the concept here? What are you going to build? Effectively two pavilions, I suppose you'd say. One's a brick box and the other's a glass box. Beautiful. It's an L, 
which we think is a good shape to begin with because you get shelter from one side and then you can turn your back a little bit to the southwesterly and the other. So an Alan provides that inner courtyard sort of feel. So that's your form of the Basic house. form. What's the style of the house? It doesn't fit into any particular current slot, but right. is very much a, a, a Danish mid-century but by the sea. A Danish house? Yes. And it'll be a very different building from what you normally see around New Zealand's coasts. Yes, especially this use of brick. We wanted brick because we wanted it to be no maintenance at all, but we wanted a bit more style to it. So when I look at your house, I'm not going to imagine a 1960s brick and tile home. No, that Scandinavian longer look to it, I believe, it will make a much more appealing aesthetic. Matthew and Rosemary's house features a three-car garage in the basement a garden storage space, laundry and rumpus games room. The spine of the house is a formidable brick wall, curled around an oversized front door and extending inside to create a brick pavilion with the master bedroom and ensuite on one side and, on the other, a cosy little den, wet room, bathroom and two smaller bedrooms. Continuing into the glass pavilion with floor-to-ceiling windows, and views of sea and sand. The open plan kitchen and dining flows into the living room that's intersected by a double-sided brick fireplace. The brick walls continue outside, flanking a large terrace, angled away from the prevailing wind with a lap pool and wide open stairs down to a sheltered garden. In classic clean and simple Scandinavian style, this New Zealand beach house has understated charm and low maintenance practicality. It's quite an intriguing project, this. You're building a, a brick house on a sand dune with a family architect. How long is this going to take to build? We anticipate it'll be 12 to 18 months. Now, we've got the COVID 12 influence. to 18 months? Yeah. I'm thinking more like 15 to 18, but yeah. And what's the cost? We have told them that the budget is around 1.9. That's but a then, good budget. Yeah, but then contingencies on top of that. And it all sounds very well planned, but what keeps you awake at night, Rosemary? The one that just jumps up is that we have our son as the professional and our son. There's always a tension between what the client wants and what the architect thinks should happen. It has been and noted. Here, yes. uh, yeah. in this case, we don't think that's been a problem. I look forward to seeing this three-way relationship bloom. <laughs> There's a great deal of careful thought, preparation, and clever design evident in Matt and Rosemary's project. But you know, I'm not sure they've answered the big contextual question here. Will their Scandinavian-inspired, brick-built house have the right design language? Or will it feel like an incongruous imposition in this beautiful, granular dunescape? Designing his parents' new house is a big professional step up for Nick, relatively early in his career. And while using a Danish mid-century modern style in a coastal setting is an unusual concept, Nick has no doubt about it. The Danish influence is the tactility of materials and the atmosphere of light. It's all about openness and glass and things, and for me it's really it's about scaling privacy and intimacy and things like that. And so we have parts of the house that are actually quite dark and intimate and rich and other parts that are bathed in sunlight and really bright. And it's about creating that spectrum so the house can be used all around the yeah. year, but also provide, you know, stunning views and things like that, but also really intimate, earthy, yeah. welcoming spaces that a home should offer. So are there any parts of building this house that really scare you? There are a few things that I, I haven't done before, like brick in a residential setting, and I've got a very special format of brick and pattern that I want to work with as well. And on the coast, by a sand dune, on a property that I care dearly about, and just being a decently sized house that is going to cost a decent amount of money, that if things go wrong, that problems can compound and get worse and worse. Did that put additional pressure on you, the fact that you are designing for your parents? I think it's, it's, it's both easier and harder to design for someone in your own family because you have that relationship with them 
but at the same time it's quite hard to distinguish you know what is work and what is family life mm. and so it'd be interesting to see you know as we're tracking costs through the project if any of those tensions arise and my hope is that once this is all done there'll be a sense of peace and calm and we can just sit down you know drink a beer have a nice meal and enjoy the quiet yeah it'll be a successful place if when we all walk into it it'll be like this is home this is home yeah Early autumn at Mongafai sees the beginning of Matthew and Rosemary's build. And strangely, perhaps, they're starting with construction of the lap pool. When it starts looking like some old castle battlements, you realise your house is actually underway, you know, it's actually being built and you, know, you can see what's happening. Shaping a concrete lap pool on site is a skilled and technical operation. The concrete mix has to be exactly right so it sticks to the walls. And the speed of the spray out of the nozzle is critical. The concrete's coming out at about 100k an hour. It's a very thick mix with very, very little slump. Most concrete would just go, go to the ground, whereas this would actually stay in the shape of the bucket. Because of the angle that the spray is at, if he misses, it will go 60 metres. So that's why the guys will start holding boards around, and they'll be behind the boards so they're quite safe, and then the concrete will go against the boards, and then they'll remove the boards. This is a structural element, this pool, that forms part of the building on that side. And as you can see, it's a pretty major structure that they've had to box up and put steel in to get the shape for the pool. These guys were working till about well, eight or something last night with headlamps on. <laughs> so they were working late, just making sure everything's ready for the trucks to turn up, and then a cavalcade of cars followed. <laughs> To form the building platform, the sand was made wet and then compacted. They're using concrete strip foundations, wider than they are deep, to spread the load of the building over the compacted ground. This is a good building team that, that we've got. Yeah, I feel confident anyway. And there's, there's no reason me trying to second guess what they're doing. They know what they're doing. And uh, it looks, I think, fantastic what they've done so far. It is indeed a good start but doing laps in the pool is still a long way off. I just hope, when everything's said and done, this Scandinavian-style take on a Kiwi beach house looks completely at home in this classic coastal location. At Turnpoint Mungafai, the foundations are down and the lap pool is in for Matthew and Rose Marie Dunning's new beach house. What's up? It's kind of looking like a ruin at the moment though, isn't it? Yeah. You can start to see the size of the house, right? Gosh, it's yeah. massive. I know. Wow. <laughs> what have you done? Indoor out to living, Mum, that's what you wanted. <laughs> I do. Oh. The next stage of the build is the block work. Some of it is pretty straightforward, and some of it is not. On two areas on this job, we've got these curved walls, and then we're having brick backed onto it. We have to get the blocks perfect, because our bricks are following that block line around the outside. So if we don't get those blocks in the right place, the bricks aren't going to be in the right place. So definitely this part of the job is going to be crucial to the later stage of us laying the bricks. With the substantial brick walls such a feature of Nick's Danish mid-century design, he needs to make sure he chooses the right ones. And of course, he also needs sign-off from his clients. 
Whoa, what an array. <laughs> the coloured ones are from Australia. This is the handmade one. Yeah, this one's come all the way from Holland and is literally 10 times the price of this one. Ah. That's the colour of the clay that comes out of Huntley, but I think it might just get lost in the sand dune. Mm. I think the red's quite nice. This comes from Canterbury. And I love the elegance of that shape. Yeah, it's a good shape. It's a skinny brick, make mm. the house look a little bit longer and less tall. It'll, it'll sort of blend yeah. it out the side. The nod ends up going to the Christchurch brick for price and style and also practicality. With COVID already disrupting building supply lines, buying local makes a lot of sense. As the build continues its upward momentum, it's time for some heavy lifting as the top floor goes in. So you guys, when they're lifting in, you guys are gonna come down, you're gonna stand over here, and when, when then he gets it within 100, then you walk in and place it. That's all right. I'm really thrilled to see the progress and the precision, everybody working together to make it happen. I'm looking forward to being able to stand up there and walk around and see what I'm gonna see. But while construction is going well so far, Rosemary's all too aware of the bigger picture. My main worry really is what's happening with COVID and Auckland Ports doing such an abysmal job of getting anything into New Zealand. So we've tried to buy things as much as possible for New Zealand. That's why we're loving the fact that the bricks are just down in Christchurch, but it's not as it was two years ago. It's this perfect storm going on that we're trying to just keep ahead of. Despite the many challenges of building during these difficult times, the Dunnings are still coming up most weekends and continuing to enjoy the relaxed outdoor lifestyle like they have at Turnpoint for the last 20 years. The first two years we just had a caravan on there, so that was fun and basic because we were just hanging out in the it was scrub, it was just yeah, scrub yeah. and sand. And has it changed over the years? And then a few more houses here now. Yeah, the Clearly development's new definitely one. changed. Mm. It's a bit more subdued and cultivated looking. Right. But how did you choose to come here in the first place? Well, we were sheltering from the rain at Waipu Cove and saw a sort of a yellowed ad uh -huh. outside the ice cream shop. And Matthew said, oh, you should go and have a look at that. And I got out of the car with the boys and up on this ridge here, and they saw the sand dune and they just took off this towards it. This big fella back there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ah, and that's what that appealed to us, was it nice and, nice and close to Auckland. It had a, like a safe sense of adventure for the kids. And they were good landmarks so that they could always find their way home. And at that time, there was a number of other families with kids the same age, and, and they could roam around. And, and obviously the, the boogie boards down the dune and hours in the sea and the memories in the... Yeah. Yeah. goes on for you know if it goes on for months and months you're gonna have to really you know maybe take some things down which would be a real shame yeah lots of concerns as Nick's vigil continues he's suddenly thrown a job he didn't expect so soon he's got to make decisions on the interior color scheme and get the orders in at a time when he can't get consultants on site or even any samples delivered 
I'm just having to pick things now and hope that they work together. It's a lot stronger to be able to stand in a half-finished space and then pick the colours and material. Normally you would spend a lot of time talking and looking at samples and discussing with people. I just had to go, oh, no one can come here, so I've got to make this call. Um, that was quite, yeah. We'll figure out if I've made the right decision in a few months, I guess. The level four lockdown that closed the Mongafai build lasts nearly a month before Northland drops to level three and restrictions ease. So we've got two beams in front here and the rest are out on that outer edge. The builders who live locally are back on the job and timber framing is going up on the top floor. But while there's progress here, Auckland's still in full lockdown and there are problems getting some materials and tradespeople across the border and onto site. One done, seven to go. No problems. However, there are a couple of things here never in short supply. Building on sand definitely comes with its challenges. It's in our clothes, it's in our teeth, it's in our ears. We had a storm one weekend and we had 40, 50 mil of sand right through the whole house. If we're using our tools close to the ground, it'll actually suck up into our tools and, and destroy our tools, which three drills have been thrown away basically from this job already. Meanwhile, for Aucklanders, the sands of time have moved painfully slowly. Auckland has been in lockdown for nearly four months now, which means that only essential workers have been able to leave the city. Now, that also means that Matt and Rosemary haven't been able to see their emerging house, and neither have I. We've seen photos, yes, good, but nothing beats being feet on the ground, experiencing the build as it happens. Fortunately, things are changing, borders are open, and I can finally hit the road. Next stop, Mongafai. And I'm very pleased to say this build doesn't disappoint. Look at that. The L-shaped design is very clear now. There are two stories too, and the roof is on. Hi. Hi. Well, Tom. I feel like a wanderer returning. It's been a while, hasn't it? How are you it doing? Is. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Tom. Good to see you again. It's been a difficult time to build a house, but there's lots of house here. There's a lot happening. I'm really excited to see it. You must have been chomping at the bit to get back. Before lockdown, we had half a concrete floor. And then when we came back a few days ago... Yeah, only a few days roof ago. Roof on. So, exciting times. Yes. And a building to see. Yeah. Right, let's yeah, go. Yeah, so come up. For me, there's a real sense of anticipation, enhanced by the classic compression and release principle Nick's using here. I'm compressed, contained, walking in, and then released into this. Even with the scaffolding up, I'm right amongst the sand, sea, and sky. This is the large living open plan area. Even with the braces still here, what's beyond is magical. It's uh, a great view. Being here last night, watching the sunset that was right around. You can imagine, though, once the joiner is in and it's completely uncluttered, it really will be another reveal for okay. us. Yeah. This is a long way from the caravan the Dunnings started out with here at Turnpoint 20 years ago. In fact, with all due respect to classic Kiwi batches, this is a long way from them too. This is big and bold, a real statement on the sand, which you can walk out to and stick your toes in. These are lovely, these Aren't they generous beautiful? steps, yeah. They really are. It's, yeah. um, I mean, they're like, a, I, I want to take a seat and watch and that's exactly, maybe a bit of Shakespeare. That's, that's exactly it's, what it's we do. It's the beer spot at the moment. Yeah, yes, it's a, a little right. amphitheater. And then the beach comes up to you. <laughs> it does at the Currently moment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
I know the Dunnings and their builders have ordered materials and fittings well in advance. But with so many projects nationwide crippled by COVID and supply disruption, how much at risk are they? Do you have everything you need to finish this place? Well, fingers crossed. We I don't know about finished. You never know what might happen. I guess it could be the smallest thing that would hold you up. You know, there was a problem, I believe, months ago with fastness. I mean, it could be something as simple as that that can hold a project up. Um, but so far, so good. You had a pre-lockdown costing. Has that increased at all? So far, and, and I know that there's a lot of stuff to still happen. Mm. We're still doing OK. But as we all know, the worst possible time to be building a house. <laughs> with the builders and now his parents back on site, Nick's lonely lockdown is over. And while it's easy to be wowed by the wonderful views and the open plan living, he's also excited about something else. So this is a den. Yeah. So what is fantastic about this room, we can start to see this now that the sheathing is up, is you get that depth and darkness in this room. It's not, you know, all glass and openness. So in summertime, you know, obviously this will all be open, but you can imagine in winter when it's all closed down, uh, just a lot more uh, sheltered and protected mm. and earthy. We've got brick running all the way through this wall. So this won't just feel like skin on a building, it'll feel like a three-dimensional object. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The, the spine of the house is the solid anchored entity that's just really holding the house here. And I feel yeah. you probably want to run your hands along that, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Small module tactile material. Yeah, exactly. And then this is your room, Nick. This is ostensibly my room, yeah. Yeah, I can't see why you've chosen this. It's, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a fantastic spot, isn't it? It is. Nick's in great humour. And why wouldn't he be? His clients, his parents, are back at the bill for the first time after four months lockdown. And they're loving what he's doing. I feel like I understand how mum and dad live and sort of translating that for them, you bear a lot of responsibility in that. And it has been very rewarding recently, you know, the first time they've come up here and now we have all these walls and things going, oh, this is fantastic. This is, yeah. you know, better than what we thought it was gonna be, which is really great. Cause you do worry, you know, you draw all these things and you try and understand it. Uh, you don't quite know until it <laughs> goes so up it in the air. Right. My mantra is I want to do a good enough job that people invite me back for dinner once we're done. OK. And this one more so. <laughs> I am super impressed with all the progress on site. There's just one thing. I'm still in two minds about this house in this place. There are two very different threads going on here. On the one hand, Matt and Rosemary's house shows all the signs of becoming a sophisticated, thoughtful, highly polished building. But on the other hand, it was inspired by simple, fun, carefree holidays amongst these dunes. I'm just having real problems reconciling those two narratives. But I do hope that once it's finished, it fully embodies the spirit which inspired its creation. The new year at Ten Point Mungafai sees the start of one of the biggest jobs on site. 60,000 custom made bricks. Because they're so thin, they're only 40, 50 mils thick, they're going to be here for a very long time. We've been here for about a week, and we've probably got about seven more to go, I'd say, on the outside. And then we'll start again on the inside, and we've got a few weeks in there as well doing the interior bricks that wrap around the door. I mean, laying bricks are laying bricks, but then you've got a few curved balls. You've got curved walls and lots of different heights. We're trying to make everything flow into the next level, if that makes sense. The artisan bricks are not entirely the same, especially in terms of color. And the plan is to mix them all together. But the question is now, what colour will the mortar be when it dries? Because Nick wants to experiment. He wanted something darker than a standard grey mortar, because he wants it to pop. But we didn't want to go jet black, so it was too busy. 
So we just ended up with like a charcoal colour. It will dry a lot lighter than what you see now, and we're just hoping that that's going to be just how he wants it when it finally dries. This is going to be interesting. Red brick on this grand scale is a statement on its own. And if the mortar ends up being quite dark as well, I'm wondering if the overall effect will be overpowering and whether this is a calculated risk or an all-out gamble. For now, the bricks are out of Nick's hands. But there's no taking it easy. Not only is he the architectural and interior designer on the build, he's making furniture for it too. Every house that I design, I like to build at least just one piece of furniture for it. And that's just a way that I can touch the project physically. But for this house, I'm a bit more blessed. I can um, make a bit more. And so in the den, we need a couple of easy reading chairs. But Nick's chairs are just the entree. His main course for mum and dad is a whole dining table. I've made this little mock-up of the dining table with two different end styles, because so we're kind of talking about whether or not it might be a curved end or a rectangular end, and with four different leg styles too. But I think I prefer something longer and more elegant, like this table, and I think um, it sort of will sit in the space a lot better and, and use the space a lot more. So it doesn't need any steel at all? No steel, no bolts. There'll be a, like a central rail that runs through here with sort of um, intersection beams there. This will be really elegant and really durable as well. Yeah. That's blue. Just watch. Fantastic. While Nick's always keen to expand his range of skills, there's one part of the house he's not going to tackle. That job's been contracted out to a bespoke joinery company in Auckland. Oh, wow. What do you reckon? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. The door in a house is really important. Yeah, it's the first thing you see when you walk in, and it's such a critical piece of the architecture. And up. I mean, it looked big lying down. Look big lying down. It looks yeah. even bigger standing up. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Welcome home. Oh. That's nice. Yeah, and now, if you want to shut it, just literally pull it and just let it go. Are you sure? Yep. And what you'll find is yeah. it's got a nice control there, and then at the end, you see Clicks that? Up. And that's how it latches. The door is very impressive. It's just a scale that's going to really suit the whole house and um, finish off that whole front wall, which is all about privacy and then welcome. Um, and this door is going to do exactly that. It's great to see it. By February, the brickies have made a dent in the mountain of bricks they have to lay for the walls. And while they battle on, the builders want to get the house all closed in and the windows installed. However, nothing's ever straightforward in this high wind zone. The wind has picked up in the last hour. As you can see from our windsock, it's blowing about 35, 40 k an hour winds. When the window's three metres tall, a lot of wind pressure on those windows. When the wind drops, the glazers move in. Nick's design makes the most of the views with floor-to-ceiling windows all round. Several tons of glass later, wind, sand and rain are no longer an issue on site. Inside, at least. Too bad for the brickies, though, as they continue their epic construction of the Great Walls of Mongafai. I'm told Mongafai locals have already nicknamed this the Red House. That may not be entirely complimentary, but I'm going to wait until the builders are finished before making my final call. According to Nick, though, his parents are thrilled. The feedback I've got says they love it. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's some nerves around that always. They've put a lot of trust in me, a lot more trust than I would get on other job sites. And, you know, there's always a worry of like, oh, you know, I said that this is going to look great, and it doesn't. So, yeah, that definitely plays on your mind a lot. <laughs> it's a very large statement, and it's not something that we can change. So, I don't know. It's um, I think we'll have to wait until the last brick's laid. <laughs> I have to
to say I'm more than a little intrigued today about returning to Mongafai. For me, this is a great piece of architecture in a beautiful setting. But actually, what's really important is whether Matthew and Rosemary really love the house their son has built for them. And the house. That's a lot of brick. <laughs> That's incredible. So pure, conceptual, strong. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. The curtain opens. It's so lovely to see you. Matthew, what an event coming to your house. And, and you know, there's no interference, no windows. It's just a pure, singular material. But then this lovely little fold and the welcoming entrance to what's beyond which I think is going to be, well, you show me. Come on yeah. on. yeah. That great door, I mean, I, I, it makes me feel tiny. Is that <laughs> it is beautiful. And then... It's gobsmacking, that view, isn't it? I'm going to have to stop looking because there's so much more here and this kitchen, beautiful. It's, it's actually more like furniture, isn't it? Yeah, well, we tried to sort of get that idea going of almost like the mid-century sideboard type of idea, yes. maybe. It works so well. Nick clearly has a, a vision that goes beyond an individual brick and, a, and now this is finished, you can see that everywhere. It's a great eye line here, isn't it, over the trees? Yes, well, this was a lovely surprise for us, actually. We hadn't imagined that it would give us a totally different perspective. Yeah. And bring us out into the view more. We passed Nick's table, and I think I need to start life again. I feel like an underachiever. Note to self, learn how to make stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but back to the brick and the question of how much is too much. Hasn't it gone too far with the sheer number of brick line surfaces? Well, now I've seen it all, I think it works really well. With this paired back material palette perfectly dissolving the division between interior and exterior spaces. I love this. This is the reverse of that entrance curve, isn't it? And oh, look, the, this curves as well. What a, a lovely entrance corridor to the bedroom. Skylight. Beautiful big window. The view you get of the night sky and the stars is spectacular. And the, the floor has that curve now echoing that curve. Is that the same radius? I'd imagine it is. Probably. It's yeah. quite a um, difficult detail and a real tribute to the tilers and the floor people to actually get that curve like that. Nick expanded his brief by designing and making furniture and fittings like the door handles. And that broadening of architectural scope is something I really enjoy. And he's in good company here. Many of the architectural greats designed everything from their buildings all the way down to even the cutlery and the candlesticks. This place is a triumph. Well done. <laughs> and uh, even the furniture here, I mean, it fits the curve. Is that, is that custom made? Mm, creates a bit more interaction when you're watching TV as opposed to everyone being lined up like at a cinema. So the thing that I always wondered about this project was this is a classic Kiwi beachside location, but this house is unexpected. This isn't what you normally build. And so did you ever have that consideration or a concern? <laughs> there were definitely some outside opinions that were maybe uh, cautioning, questioning of the colour choices and the material choices. Right. I think now that people have seen it, they realise that there are different ways of building especially on the coastlines, um, and that this is a very resilient, strong house.
one of that. You didn't want to tame it? No. I have to say, this is pretty dreamlike sitting here. It must be the best seats in the house in Mongafai. Absolutely. Oh, no absolutely. doubt about it. A few people will find this house a bit confronting, certainly arriving at it. It is very solid. Uh, I love it. Absolutely, so do we. You walk up the stairs and the reveal for us every time is as good as the first time. How does this part of the Mungify chapter feel for you? Chapter is a good word for it because there is the chapter of the early years with our young boys and yes. the active years at our other property where we were out on the boat. And then this is the part where we're enjoying more the environment. Your whole journey, I think originally you said 12 to 18 months. Of course, COVID happened. Uh, and we're here a couple of years after you started. What was the final spend? So I, I think we initially said 1.9 or two-ish around there for the house. And I think probably COVID would have added another 10% again on that. It's, and um, up speaking various things. So probably ended up around about two and a half. But we were very lucky to have started when we did. If we'd even gone six months, nine months later, it would have been even more. Mm. So yeah. We were, we were at the start of that horrible train that everybody's still going through. Absolutely, price increase uh, week by week. To go close to your budget is fantastic, and, and that view alone has to be worth that. Mm. It's a special spot. Would you change anything about this house? I wouldn't change a thing. Congratulations. I think having that faith has really paid dividends. Thank you, Tom. Throughout this whole process, I've been trying to reconcile two apparently dissimilar ideas. A holiday seaside narrative and a bold European-inspired architectural statement. But actually, what I come to realize is you don't need to reconcile those things because what Nick's vision, fully nurtured by Matthew and Rosemary, has delivered is what architecture can and should do. That is to exceed expectations, challenge the norm, open up minds to new possibilities. OK, so being here was inspired by carefree childhood memories. But what this house represents is a brilliant new chapter for Matthew and Rosemary, one that I know they will fully embrace and enjoy. How could you not? <laughs>